Hello everyone. I am just waiting for everybody to come on and join our chat. We will be talking tonight with such a wonderful um, artist, uh, Martin Murphy. And uh, I know he's waiting on the sidelines there and I will invite you soon, Martin. I'm just waiting for um, everyone to come on and I'll give a little introduction uh, on you before I invite you into our Instagram live. Yeah, so um, it looks like we've got uh, a few people joining us now, which is which is great. Uh, I'm looking forward to talking with Martin Murphy tonight and just seeing what he's up to in his studio and uh, uh, give everybody and our viewers a chance to see his work, his new series and uh, what he's working on and get to know um, one of our elected members tonight. And I plan to do this um, at least every month to reconnect with members of the association. Um, so, so we're going to start this live in a little while, in about uh, a minute or so. And I'll start with a, a, a biography recap. Well, welcome everybody. It is seven o'clock. Welcome to an Instagram live by the Society of Canadian Artists. I am so happy that you have decided to join us this evening and um, uh, get to know one of our featured artists tonight uh, who is also an elected member of the uh, Society of Canadian Artists. Our special guest tonight is uh, Martin Murphy. But before that, let me introduce myself to you. My name is Marissa Sweet. I am the past president of the Society of Canadian Artists. And um, I just wanted to uh, drop in and uh, communicate with all the members and all followers of the SCA. So tonight we are honored to have Martin Murphy as our uh, special guest. And I'll just read to you a little bit on his biography. Martin Murphy's career has been a mix of oil painting, visual effects for film, and as a performer in musical theater. After studying editorial illustration at the Ontario College of Art, Martin performed across Canada in such big productions such as Cats, he was also in the Stratford Festival, and The Phantom of the Opera. Um, Martin Murphy also painted commissions in his spare time. Once retired from the theater, Martin moved to California um, to work for Lucas Films. Uh, Lucasfilm's Industrial Light and Magic as a digital artist and he worked as a supervisor working on films such as Pirates of the Caribbean, Star Wars, and the Jurassic World uh, and also I believe King Kong. So Martin right now currently paints full-time out of British Columbia and in Ontario. His oil on canvas subjects ranges from figures to still life and a fascination with koi. So I am going to invite Martin now and Martin, I know you're there. So I'm going to invite you to join the, the chat. There he is! <laughs> Excellent! Yay! <laughs> well, thank you so much, Martin. It's an honor 
thank you so you much. Uh, thank you so much for having me. For this interview, I, I thank you for uh, taking the time to speak with us. Absolutely. Well, thank you for the invitation. Yeah. Excellent. Who doesn't like talking about their own art? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, um, oh, look, Karen says hello. Karen is, uh, she met you at the Arts and Letters Club. Hi, Hi Karen. Karen. <laughs> so, um, Martin, I I have a few questions to ask you um, before you start showing your artwork. But um, I, I just wanted to learn more about your your background in theater and in digital art uh, could you talk a little bit about that journey well they both sort of started at the same time yeah. um probably in the early 80s maybe 1980 mm -hmm. um maybe 1981 um i was uh in high school i was always interested in theater and art and um my dad took me to a uh, uh, was a community theater production when I was probably 15 or something like that. And then I got the theater bug. And then um, I went to Canada's Wonderland. And I saw back in the day, they had these massive productions with like 18 dancers. And uh, in their first year, they actually had an orchestra. What? in oh. in their in their big theater in the canterbury theater there so i saw that and i was like i want to do that but i was uh just getting into the art as well and then i got accepted at uh, oca in their illustration program so i was training as a dancer trying to you know see what this is all about and then going to college for uh art at the same time and it was like a wacky crazy time when when you're young you can do everything right so right. i was getting up early i was still living in uh unionville and i would commute in the mornings with my sister because she worked downtown um i would sleep because she had to get there early i'd sleep at the bottom of the of oca in the basement and i'd get up when it was time at nine o'clock do my classes and then i would run out to the uh dance studio there called la ballet jazz and take you know as many classes as i could afford as a dancer so i was i did that for years like a crazy person i was exhausted but i was you know living my good life and trying to you know soak up as much as of my life as i can um at the time but then uh, i got this really great job in um france uh just for a summer just like a broadway review show it was you know like a theme park type of thing and i actually left oca oh. in my fourth year so I, I know i oh, didn't know i didn't I'm, know that i'm one of those <laughs> <laughs> so i never finished you never my really four year. graduated i did not <laughs> and it was a bitter um it was a bitter thing because at the time i was like really into the performing and i wasn't having a great time at our college i mean my marks i guess were okay but i felt i just didn't fit in um for you know one reason or another and i literally remember this i was like in this the days i was like went to my locker pulled out my you know giant black um you know portfolio thing zipped it up put all my stuff in and walked out wow that was, that was terrible and then uh, i packed my bags and left for france for the summer and it changed my life nice yeah uh, yeah and then that job led to another theater job led to another theater job and then um i got my first big show which was cats yeah in 1988 um and um, was that in toronto it was in toronto yes nice. there were there were two casts to the original production um and i was the second cast of the original yeah. production so nice. the first cast i think did a year and a half or a year in toronto perhaps i'm probably getting this wrong and then they toured and then they took a break and some of those cast members finished and left and then i replaced somebody uh, by the name of Tim French in the show and we continued on for another close to two years maybe wow. um, 
so we did it. We traveled, we did the tour, and then we um, sat in at Massey Hall for, I wow. think, a year. So that was extraordinary. And we were so young. I look back at that. I was like 23 when I was hired. So I feel like I, like such a baby, it feels Top like. Top of the world, though, right? You're right. invincible. It was right? the biggest production in yeah. the country. And oh. uh, we were treated like rock stars. Yeah. It was incredible. Yeah. I know, I know. My cousin attended that, and she, she she's just raving about that. <laughs> yeah. So, so and now it has yeah. It has such a bad rap now, and the movie didn't oh, help, oh, and it's kind oh. of a bit of a butt of a joke. So, there's always like when you know when I tell people I did cats, and I can always see them go. Mm, like really? This oh. oh yeah. yeah. And but then so like, you went to, and then you you said uh, after cats you 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 studied digital art or you you took lessons or you just self-taught or what what happened there yeah that's kind of kind of exactly right so i was on tour um you know one show leads to another and another and another and it was like 13 years of theater um and uh i think i was on tour with um sunset boulevard believe it or nice. not when it was here wow. and um it was mid 90s I got my first computer somebody showed me in the office of the theater hey, hey Martin have you seen this kind of art and they showed me it was like you know a Microsoft paint oh. or something in oh, 1995 okay. <laughs> and I looked on yeah. a computer I was like you can draw on a computer you can have your own computer and like they were really expensive back then right like five grand and sure. the monitor was another four grand yeah. and it was like super expensive but I bought a computer and a monitor and uh, the production people were very nice and they let me take it from city to city to city and after i finished the show at night i would you know go back and buy the user manuals and the not the user manuals but the how-to books of how to do digital art and i put them on my lap and I go, page one mm, all right this is how you draw this and this is so i taught myself how to use a computer and do digital art and i was doing any job you know you can imagine like business cards and anything and some of them were good and some of them were not so good um but it was just anything i could do to just to learn and i was doing portrait commissions on the side so i still kept in the painting world in the art world at the same time and if any show needed a poster i would be i'll do it for you nice um so when it was time to retire from theater in i think 97 or 98 um i was ready to go I felt so I set up a website and put my work up and um, I got a very nice job offer from a computer game company so I worked for them out of London Ontario digital extremes for two years and um, got production experience and um, just learning tons those people were wonderful and big shout out to James Schmaltz who's an amazing boss and uh, it was a wonderful experience um, but I wasn't a gamer so i didn't even own any games at the time right. so it is a rough if anyone is a game artist it's a it's like a long, long yeah, yeah you have to be very passionate about it it's long hours and um so i left after a couple of years after two years and i said i want to get into movies Ooh. so i thought okay i'm gonna spend you know two months and build a demo reel and do a bunch of art and put it together and uh, Two months was like eight months. It took me eight months of no work, just doing this and building animations and learning how to do 3D and everything like that. And I put together this reel on VHS back in the day. Nice. And uh, I, I said, okay, I'll send it out to the best of the best and then work down. So I sent it to Industrial Light Magic and I got a call because they were looking for people for this movie um about pirates and it was based on a ride on disneyland and i was like okay i'll do it and it was a six month contract so i got on my car and i drove from toronto to san francisco Ooh. and yeah and that's I a long drive it was a five days <laughs> four days yeah maybe five days um and uh it, it's funny thing about that drive like you never know when the last gas station is going to be oh. right and i was by oh. myself in this little <laughs> neon yeah but uh it turns out like every quarter tank you bump into a gas station so yeah it was, wasn't too 
bad. But um, the six month contract turned into 14 years. Oh. And I l literally sold my condo over the phone from San Francisco. It's like, I won't be back. I can't be a landlord anymore. I had all these crazy tenants in there and I just sold everything over the phone and lived in California for 14 years. So you were hired by Lucas Films? Correct. Wow. Correct. Yeah. Wow. And and the first gig that you did was Pirates of the Caribbean? Was the first one. Oh my, and I was my gosh. Green, green, oh. green. Like it was very intimidating working with all these incredible digital artists. Um and uh, uh, you know they were having meetings on how to do the layered skin on those skeleton creatures from that film, and uh, I was just wide-eyed, like oh, I am way over my head. But they were really wonderful, and they have like a training session, you know, of like two to three weeks of just boot camp of like learning their software and how to do this stuff. So it was wonderful, um, but a very and very exciting, and I just learned so much because their you know the camera on their characters is like here you know That's so you right. have you have to be able to do the most extreme clean Detail. detailed um uh creatures and digital doubles yeah, because and the pirates were all dead they were yeah. all ghosts and they no. would appear with their form but then they would transform into like human beings that's correct right? but they're so, actually dead so you yeah. did most of that uh, i was hired for that first few years i was hired as a digital modeler mm -hmm. so i modeled a bunch of those crew members and the monkey and oh. then any other tr um props and ships and anything they asked me to model i would model in the computer oh. and then it was years later that i started painting and texture painting and i enjoyed that a little bit more and it was a bit more in my wheelhouse so I started just exclusively as a texture painter. Yeah. So I'd be painting everything. Wow. Um, wow. Now, the, the Pirates of the Caribbean went on to movie two, three, and four. Were you involved in that as well? I did the first the, two. So first I did uh, yeah. Dead Man's Chest right. and, no, Curse of the Black Pearl right. and then Dead Man's Chest. Yeah. Wow. And those are like the the... I mean, like that's creme de la creme. That's uh, oh, nothing beats the original. Really. Right. So, yeah. so yeah. Oh wow. The director, that was so exciting for you. Yeah, the director what? Gore Verbinski is an incredible art director, and his all his films are so beautiful and so beautifully lit, and the textures and everything—they're just so rich. Yeah. It was uh, a joy just to work and just watch him make decisions and and critique our work and you know kick things back when it needed more work and it's just amazing it's really really a incredible learning experience and did did you as a team did you win an oscar or anything yeah uh, well not me personally of course but right the, as, a, as the team of our the team digital, yeah, yeah one well the visual effects for um dead man's chest the one with all the squid and the sea creatures oh, that won the right. oscar for yeah. the best visual effects. Oh my yeah. God. So did you actually go to like the opening of the Oscars? I know they have different events, you know, for the non-Hollywood <laughs> and the Hollywood. No, so. they, um, if the big wigs go and the directors go <laughs> and the visual effects supervisors go, but uh, us, us, we folk in the trenches. <laughs> We don't go. Yeah. <laughs> Only if you're lucky. I, I have when I was when I sort of moved up the ladder and I was a supervisor, I went to a couple yes. of openings. Uh, yes. but no Oscars or anything. And which but, op uh, openings did you go to? I went to the opening of uh Cowboys and Aliens oh, yeah. and yes. Jurassic World. Oh yes. Yes. And you did um if I recall, you did the, the facial structure of that um oh am i mistaken with uh, that um dinosaur or was uh, that uh, king uh, kong oh uh the the king kong one mm -hmm. or the yes i did the texture work for the um skull crawlers those creatures oh 
the, the, the crazy things that the, um, the, the King Kong was fighting. There's like two arms and like a beak sort oh. of and like a long tail. Okay. And I, yeah, and I was the texture supervisor for that. For that. So. Oh, I have to watch that now, Martin, because... <laughs> it's actually it's been really a while. good. I think it was nominated for an Oscar. We didn't win that year, but um, we got a nomination. That is so awesome. So from that, it's like super high, intense, uh, involved in the world of, of movie making. Um, when did you know that it was time for you to hunker down and focus on your own individual art? Oh, I was burnt oh. out. So I did 14 years in San Francisco and then I moved back to Canada and I did two more years in Vancouver mm. uh, for the same company for Industrial Light and Magic. Mm -hmm. But I burnt out. Oh. Um, the oh. productions have, are so involved and very difficult. And um, the quality demand for the higher quality is higher, but the um, deadlines become shorter. Ah. So it is a very difficult um, career uh, and you have to be careful to watch yourself and stay healthy and monitor your own hours and don't work, you know, 50 to 100 hours a week. It can be pretty bad. Yeah. And uh, yeah. after 17 years, almost 17 years, 16 and a half, I burnt out. Mm -hmm. I had nothing left. I was cranky. I resented happy people. <laughs> it was Oh, uh, yeah. I would walk down the street. I'm not kidding. I'd walk oh, down no. the street and I'd be all overworked and tired. And I'd look over and I see people on a patio having coffee or a beer or something. And I'd be like, why have they at work? Why, why is everybody so I just couldn't. I was fried, fried. completely fried. I, yeah, yeah. And I had to, I had to go. You had to go. So, so you left. I, and and then you did you just stay in Vancouver? Or did you go to Ontario? Or what happened after that? So uh, I immediately that week started painting and I painted, um, I had started a koi painting back in San Francisco. And when I moved to Canada, I brought yeah. the half finished painting with me and right. I finished it mm -hmm. there. And I went, okay, this is fun. I'm going to try another one and try another one. I had knew nothing about the art world um, or the fine art world, I should say nothing mm -hmm. about galleries, nothing about anything. I was just painting and foolishly making every dumb mistake, you know, approaching galleries with, hi, I have a painting, you know, it's like stupid, stupid. <laughs> but now I know better. Um, so I painted in Vancouver for three or four years um, and got to know the Federation of Canadian Artists and the Society of Canadian Artists, of course. And, um, but now I'm in Ontario because I look after my mom and dad here in Markham. Yes. And uh, yes. yeah. So I'm in their basement at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> and I love up, it. They're upstairs. And uh, uh, I keep an eye on them and I help out with everything that I can. That's and, awesome. Uh, and do my painting when I'm not. Yes. So that's where I am now. So are you, do you still have your home in Vancouver or you've relocated here now? No, I still have. No, not quite yet. I'm, I'm on that. I don't Transient. quite know. Yeah, I don't yeah. quite know where. Yeah. Where to lay my hat to call my home. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I know, you know, mom and dad upstairs are number one priority. Of and uh um I'm yeah, I I just don't know. I it's kind of weird. It's like I kind of live month to month. Yes. And uh sort of make decisions about uh, online art shows and enter those kind of a things and right now I'm trying to just get good 10 solid pieces together so if I approach a gallery they and they offer me a show at some point I can say I've got 10 pieces but I don't have 10 pieces yeah yet. almost yeah. so you're, you're preparing a, a body of work correct yeah yeah which segue now to my next question here martin because you were very good in just providing that roadmap for me <laughs> it's like uh um how do you describe your art um i guess um it's funny i don't even know i just paint what i like and i paint what i want and i try to keep loose and i try to do this and it always just ends up looking in this one sort of way <laughs> so i guess it's realism it's right. not hyper realism at all but it's yes. realism 
and I enjoy figures and um, as I mentioned the fish and um, I had uh, I like mixing the fish in with the figures a couple of times I've done that I've got another one actually my next painting will be that as well um, but I guess it's like I was always fascinated with John Singer Sargent a very you know popular figure portrait painter and those giant you know six seven eight foot paintings these massive things that were just so beautiful and um that's always in the back of my mind when i'm painting you know trying to keep loose and make it look simple and it never does they always <laughs> end up being a bit too tight but well you, the, yeah but yeah that that is your process so i think you have to kind of uh uh just stick with your process and and stick with what comes easy to you you know mm -hmm. and i think some some artists that are probably listening right now is that they want to to paint like let's say they want to paint like this artist but if it's not what comes easy to you it, it is not you so you have to paint the way you want to paint the way right. the way that's easy for you that is your style that is your thumb mark that is your handwriting Yes, and we're yeah. all influenced, of course, and we're all um, inspired by other artists and their use of color and their brushwork and all that stuff. That's all great. Um, just along, I guess, as you find, I don't know, I've seen lots of uh, online uh, YouTube videos about finding your style or searching for it. And uh, um, some people feel they don't have one or they're looking for it, and other people, I've seen people with the most remarkable, gorgeous, sort of loose style brushwork that I wish I had. Yeah. And just make it look so, so beautiful. Easy. Like, and the star of their paintings is their brushwork. Mm -hmm. It's just mm -hmm. mind blowing. It's mm -hmm. so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And um, I could just, I'm just not that kind of a painter for some reason. I tried and it just always ends up just being, you know, that and uh, yeah yeah because you <laughs> you gravitate to what is you and then you can't change that you could get influenced and uh, inspired yeah but but that's what yeah yeah and and it, it's tough because i do have students that i want to paint like you marissa and i go well you know what I, I will do it i will demonstrate how i would approach it but you have to find what comes easy for you right yeah if i if i ever do like um classes or an online tutorial or anything i'm gonna call it don't paint like me <laughs> <laughs> i'll show you how i do it and yeah. then but don't paint like me yeah. you paint like you yeah because really uh even in your style too because i know you do a lot of glazes even if they just get that even if they just apply the glazing uh technique that's a plus already. Yeah. But uh, I think everybody's so original. So um, we have uh, we have a multitude of of, of uh, individuality around us. Yeah. So um, tell us a little brief uh, process. Like, how do you start? How do you start with all this beautiful figurative work that you have there behind you? Do you take pictures? Oh what yes. Do you, what do you uh, start with, uh, Martin? There's a a lot of work in my stuff that happens even before the brush starts yeah. hitting the canvas yeah. like right. sometimes like uh, weeks of work um, um, usually with a concept an idea maybe a few sketches um, uh, and then I will uh, I do a sometimes an elaborate and sometimes a simple photo shoot mm -hmm. um, I'll, get props mm -hmm. and fabrics mm -hmm. and uh, make phone calls of, 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 you know, my friends or models that I hire and, you know, arrange photo shoots. And um, they're usually a few hours long, sometimes like two, two and a half hours. I think that's probably a good time. Yeah. And, um, uh, and go through a bunch of different poses. Um, I kind of know what I'm looking for, but sometimes, you know, uh, when you see what your idea is, that you're like, hmm, maybe not. But most of the time, the people inspire me, like the, the people I asked to, to pose for me are usually, there's something very unique about them, and they inspire me to do something different and, and go well, from there. 
give me an example like maybe show us one of your uh paintings there that started off with a pictorial like uh with photography first and then it just evolved into you know a nice photo session and, <laughs> and then there you go i wonder if i have it here i do give me one yeah. sec i ha okay so all you i can, can talk bring about your phone around yeah, yeah so let me see if i can flick this phone on you'll have to there. take it there oh, no sorry so this painting for instance this yeah. is right this is my friend lisa and i went to high school or i'm sorry grade school with lisa oh. grade seven and oh. eight and she oh still lives close by <laughs> so i had always had this amazing idea to do a painting that was all fabrics and patterns from corner to corner um uh, so my mom here has a ton of these uh, beautiful carpets and then all the fabrics that you see here were all picked up from Value Village for like six bucks and I would see them that were interesting and I would buy them and then just put them in the closet so I had quite a collection of these and then um, uh, my aunt who lives also nearby she says well I've got this um dress that's actually my mother's who's my grandmother obviously oh my um, she says my you know she wore it once and it's colorful do you think you can use it and i said give that to me <laughs> so i grabbed <laughs> it and we put it on my friend lisa we i set all this stuff up on the on my um uh, parents garage floor Oh. And she laid down on the garage floor and I stood up on a, um, a ladder, ladder and I shot her from above. And, uh, and we did a few poses and then I would take this into the computer and I would just fix the lighting a little bit or, you know, fix a little, a uh, few things. And actually, if I can, like I added the teapot and teacup, that's my mother's. I added that in later afterwards. Oh, okay. And so when I showed the painting to Lisa, she said, when did you serve me tea? <laughs> Which is kind of cute. Anyway, so th that was like a full day of thinking stuff out and gathering the stuff and laying it on the floor. And then two hours photo shoot with Lisa and then um, going back and then editing them and pulling out the, the right colors and trying to get more of a central glow of light um that's just around her and uh it's a big piece it's six feet tall and it took me oh, five gosh. weeks to do oh man now do yeah. you work because you say five weeks mm -hmm. do you work like a solid four hours or or do you work like uh, okay you know from 10 o'clock to four like or it it varies um uh it's the, usually when i paint it's full day so i'll start okay. actually sitting down at 10 and i'll stop and help with dinner here or run out and help my mom do whatever she needs oh, and then we'll do dinner and then i'll come back and i'll paint till nine. Oh, so wow. so they're long days but for me days. yeah it's heaven it's absolutely heaven but time then, flies really right yeah and yeah. some, I'm not, I don't consider myself a fast painter. And sometimes I'll paint like for a full day on something mm -hmm. and it just won't work. And I'll have to like go back and redo it. Redo. And it yeah. And uh, just let it dry and paint over it the mm -hmm. next day. Or um, I'm, I feel like uh, um, I'm getting a little faster. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I need to be able to crank these things out. Right. And uh, they don't, they take no. like a long time. It really be with glazing too, because you're painting with oil, you kind of want it to really dry a little bit more before you could put the next layer. Yes. And like with these paintings here, the, these ones, these six foot tall ones, these ones yeah. and these two are also six feet. Um, I can work on the face and then I'll let that dry overnight. And if it's not dry, there's always something else I can paint, you know, right. down here, I'll work on the, on the fabric or here I can do, let's see if I can get a little closer on this one. Or you could just focus quickly on, oh, the fabric. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to get the actual weft of the fabric on this thing. And same with this one here, like all these little, little notches and stuff there's always something to yeah. do around the painting so yeah. um there's always always uh always something to keep me occupied wow now do you start a portrait like uh, a figure 
do you start with the eyes like uh how would you how do you know you got the soul of your subject my, my paintings are, don't actually start looking good till the end oh. so they're really rough like yeah. i've seen people with uh, you know we've all seen those beautiful you know um progression paintings and some people the work looks good day one <laughs> you know as soon as they start to paint and i'm like <laughs> mine look don't look good to me anyway till almost the last oh. week of the last few days and then um that's when it sort of comes okay comes Together? to life oh but. man you know what martin that is so inspiring <laughs> because it's like you know sometimes i'm like i don't think i'm going anywhere with this right i just have to keep pushing it right and just have not give up and let's let's just keep working on it yeah so <laughs> that's there great are, there have been paintings there was one that um uh it was a large face of a woman and she was basically just sort of like looking and um that one i worked on for months and months and months and months it was like two months in the beginning it was it was four foot square and um it didn't work so i put it in the closet pulled it out like a year later worked on it for another <laughs> few weeks i hated it it wasn't working <laughs> threw it back in the closet and then for artist project i thought you know what maybe i will pull that off the canvas in vancouver roll it up send it to toronto and see if i can work on it so i worked on it and actually cut the top and bottom off it so it was a bit more cropped and a bit more sort of um cinematic i guess right. and uh and then it worked yeah. it finally but it was all together two four like six months of <laughs> like crazy crazy <laughs> yeah but i was determined because they were like to get it there were to get it the way you yeah. want it to be yeah and and sometimes it's there's a disconnect between your vision and your actuality and your actual doing it right yes and 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 sometimes a lot of students don't get that they get frustrated and stop altogether right mm. so it would this is very inspiring martin with what you're saying is just to keep going and 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 just try your very best every day yeah um, and uh, sometimes the background changes. Sometimes, you know, um, the, uh, like the original face was a bit brighter, but I was looking at it at the computer and I was just playing with it. Sometimes on my phone, like on Photoshop filters, I'll just run my paintings through and just see if anything jumps at me. And mm -hmm. one darkened it, except for just the top of the, of the beginning of the face. And it looked really cool. And I thought, oh, maybe that's the, the key to this. So uh -huh. I went back and I just, darkened it down and oh. it made it a bit more mysterious and, and it worked and, and then, it worked oh wow yeah. that's amazing now when i was promoting this this uh chat uh, on instagram i put in um the picture or the painting that you have behind you there right now and maybe you can talk to our viewers a little bit about this uh, uh young man there that's doing this and the title is very uh very intriguing as well please please explain that inspiration behind you well i, I did this um wonderful painting of i'll show you yeah. over here for yeah. for artist project um it's this one of my dear dear sweet friend janie who i think is actually here um janie give us a thumbs up i think you're actually listening she um uh very wonderfully let me uh pose her and paint her with this stark white background and it got a lot of response at um artist project and people really uh thought it was like contemporary and uh and i thought oh that's interesting and i liked the sort of contemporary stark white um feel of it as well so i thought okay let's try and do uh, a couple more of those so i did I hired this gentleman here. Oh, something happened. Do I see you? <laughs> oh, there, there we go. Sorry, I hit the wrong yeah. button. Okay. Uh, there. So, yes, that gentleman we, there. We did a bunch of different poses, oh. leaning, leaning poses, and um, just his face close up and um there was even a couple with like a blindfold and then a bunch of different things but this one kind of stuck out stuck out to me um 
And uh, I thought it was sort of provocative and kind of interesting. And it's a pretty good size. You'll see my hand compared oh, to his hand. Like oh, it's, yes. it's four, four feet. Four feet? 48 by 28, I think. Oh, wow. Um, and once again, it's that sort of neutral background. Mm -hmm. um, and, it, and it took it from like this sort of more traditional feel to a little bit more contemporary. Right. Um, and for this one, I really wanted, of course, just to focus on the skin and the light and how it fell over the skin without getting too, um, I guess, finicky with the hairs. Like I've seen people take a single hair on their brush dip mm -hmm. it in the paint and then make a single hair on the, and it's remarkable. Like I uh, give those people props, but like <laughs> if you get close, you'll see they're just kind of like smudges. Sure. With the hair on his arm. Wow. And up here, it's just sort of, it's suggested, but um, it's not, uh, it's not that, Let's see here. It's not that detailed, but I guess maybe it is. But then when you a little bit. when you look at it up close, it's it's sort of not that detailed. But when you look from far, it is yeah. so detailed. Now we have a question here: is, uh, Do you trace? How do you trace onto canvas? With a grid. With a grid. Yeah. So is it a one-inch grid that you do, or? No, it's uh, six-inch. Six-inch. Yeah. Okay. So I'll do I. Oh my yeah. God, I think you can even see the grid through the paint. Oh, yeah. Here, I, I can't. Oh, sticking I see. Up. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's, that's not great. <laughs> but you know what? I've seen really, like, I've seen plein air paintings that still have the bugs in them. And sure. I think that's fantastic. Yeah, so yeah. I it's, figured, the start, oh. it's a process too, yeah, right? So do you, you have the photograph and do you grid it on your computer? Correct. And then you, you transfer that measurements onto your canvas correct i'll measure this make a computer version of the same size place the my reference photo on there grid that out and then just draw it on and as i'm painting i will take a picture of it with my phone and even overlay it on top to make sure the fingers are in the right spot That's and great. all that and then just keep going from there wow now that is amazing um, and I think you're planning a new series with all the white background. Is that correct? Uh, that is correct. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm, I'm very close to finishing another one. And uh, and it's again, it's of um, my dear friend Jamie. Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. So she's, uh, I'm doing a close up of her. <laughs> and uh, it's not finished yet, but I, I will show you. It's a, I have sort of to a. I need this. this a lady now i it's like she's a friend now <laughs> oh she is um incredible this um janie is an actress she was from the national ballet and she's a we dan did, dancer she's a dancer we did cats together she is nice. incredible yeah so oh, she, this is wonderful oh, so look at that. and she is an absolutely beautiful woman and let me do a really not very flattering painting of her even though she's quite beautiful yeah because <laughs> so, when thank you, you do Janie. <laughs> thank you Janie. and the thing is when you do portraits you don't want them to come on with makeup right you want to see the skin and you want to see the under layers is that correct that is absolutely correct like no foundation maybe a little bit of makeup but um yeah i need to see i was telling Janie before our photo shoot uh, I wanted something raw and real. Wow. Um, and I want to be able to s zoom right in and see, you know, the imperfections and how the light hits the skin. And if it's has powder and foundation on it, it's just going to look like powder and foundation. Yeah, it's just going to reflect back, right? Yeah. It's not going to go deep. Yeah. Correct. I wow. Want, I want real, real <laughs> and raw. I love it. I love it, Martin. But now, I mean, like, I know, my goodness, we could talk forever. Um, but I know Instagram Live will cut us off at an hour. So I want to I wanna get to a very interesting topic right now, which is, uh, which is artificial intelligence. And, and I just heard on CBC today, you know, with the actor strike and, and the writer strike, it's all about because of uh, 
there's so many things and also ai you know it, it's all around us and how do you think this will change um the art industry or you know as painters or photographers or um you know uh, those who paint realistically or yeah well it is going to be a big change i think it's mm -hmm. going to mm -hmm. be um uh upsetting i think so i know for sure concept artists must be uh you know very worried for their for some of their jobs because um i know the ai does concept work incredibly fast and instantaneous and um so i'm sure that they're very worried i'm not too worried for uh traditional painters just because it is a tactile physical thing to see paint blobs on a canvas like you, know, you and i like we're correct. physical painters right correct yeah but i'm sure in a year from now they're going to have that figured out as well mm -hmm. um but um it is unfortunately i think probably something that is here to stay i know there's lots of lawsuits mm -hmm. um and lots of government uh interest into sort of um, what to do about this with regards to copyright and um, that kind of a thing. So it'll, it's very new um, within the last probably year and a half, I think. Yeah. So um, I guess we'll find out soon. Um, for me, I find it fascinating as somebody who, you know, has a background in, in computer art. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, so it could really, Martin, be used as a tool as well for artists, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and I've I know you've it. used it as a tool. Could you give us an example of how you used it? Absolutely. So uh, a nephew, my nephew asked me to do a logo for him. And I used to do logos a long time ago, but I love doing them. But they take me a long time. Um, yeah. But I love doing them because I think to get an idea down to the very essence of a simple symbol that says everything about somebody's company or everything i think that is difficult so he gave me the specs of um the name is blue heron engineering he likes the style of steampunk yep and yep. he likes the the blue heron because it reminds him of being up at the cottage and uh that kind of a, that kind of a thing so and i was like okay blue heron steampunk engineering hmm okay so i went and i joined um mid journey and i just typed into the computer those prompts those words just to see what the computer would give me and it gave me a lot of pretty incredible images of blue herons and everything steampunk. but they weren't yeah, they weren't exactly, they were over the top. They were very elaborate, beautiful illustrations, like jaw dropping in right. seconds, right? right. Incredible. Yeah. Um, but they weren't a logo uh, pared down and something specific. So after using it for just like a couple of weeks and cranking stuff out, and I would show him, I said, are any of these illustrations that this thing is giving us, or do, are any of those interesting? And, uh, and and basically they were just too illustrative, too busy. Um, so uh, I did find one little bit of the AI, like a, a very simple bird shape. But then I went into the computer and I used that and I started sketching and I'm like, okay, I like that kind of an area. And then I did my own version of it. Um, I pulled up a few here, let's see. If. So these are some of the. Oh, oh, nice. So these are really good, right? right. For hey. like a split second, you need a, uh, a a blue heron and a logo. There you go. And if you don't need anything too specific, you're you're on. You know, it's great. It's terrible <laughs> because it's probably stealing little bits of somebody else's artwork and put you know matching oh, it with somebody else. That's so right. that's not the idea. Um, oh. And these. These are a few more that it gave that are just incredible. Right. Um, but none of these I used, but I ended up, this is the end, uh, the final logo is this. Oh, yeah. So very uh, much more simple. And I've got a bit of the cogs and the wheels for engineering and the steampunk as if the bird was lifting its wing up to reveal that it's been engineered. 
Um, so this is the one that the client chose. But it did help me go through weeks of just sort of bashing ideas around and, and just to see what I could create and what could spawn an idea or a thought. Yeah, um, so AI can actually be used as a tool for even just brainstorming oh, with the client, right? Because instead oh. of you drawing, you know, maybe 20 images hand drawn to show to the client, which is be rejected, you know, this, this just saves some time in, in the planning stage. Correct. And I'm sure there are artists like watching this uh, going, you know, sacrilege, <laughs> you know, you're yeah, using sacrilege. stolen, yeah, you're using stolen images to create, so yeah. Um, stolen from the internet. Ah. Yeah, uh, and I'm sure that's valid, you mm. know, because it yeah. really is uh, uh, a moral question about AI and how it actually creates these images from other people's images, which is really not great. Um, but it's here. And it's going to be here to stay, I think. Yeah. Um, I can't see it going away. Um, yeah. We just yeah. have to, uh, I guess, live with it, learn it a little bit more. And, and then I guess we just have to adjust to it. And, and especially, I mean, like, we have jury shows with the Society of Canadian Artists. We want to ensure that it was actually produced by the artist instead of it being produced by ai right so and you, and you don't even need to be an artist that's you right. can create something mm -hmm. um oh here's another image too i'm going to show you this is something that i showed at the ai talk where is it oh uh just for a cover page i wanted to just show this was created by going into mid journey and typing in a i two letters boom mm -hmm. this is what it created i mean and this thing is gorgeous it is incredible it would have taken so many hours to put this together um i mean it's it's generic it doesn't really you know say anything except for ai who knows i'm not even sure it even is is it even says that but yeah um it's pretty incredible. And I did see actually an art show, um, uh, what's it called, uh, you know, um, uh, 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 a notice for an art show, an online art competition. And they're accepting digital art. And they describe digital art as something that's uh, uh, created um, half or whole by the computer. And I thought, well, oh, that's AI. Right. Am I gonna be competing with that? That? There's no mm. way I can compete with that no. beautiful piece of art, you know? Yeah. So I didn't enter because I thought there's just no, no competition. Way. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Unless... It's, it's really such a controversial topic. And actually, Manny, uh, our president of the Society of Canadian Artists, said that in his Friday forum, uh, he asked uh, um, people who are subscribing to the SCA, is AI is AI art really art? What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts, Martin? It is, <laughs> is art. AI art. It, it is art. Really obviously, art. I think it's beautiful images, but it's not created by an artist, mm. right? So if you're going to give credit where credits due, or give somebody an award. This is something literally anyone could type in AI, bing, bing, and get that image, put it in a contest and win. And in an art contest. And I don't know, it's weird. I don't know where the, the rules are, where the lines are. Um, I do feel it is art. I find these images stunning and beautiful. Um, but... They, do, they do adhere to the elements of art to the elements of design. It, it does uh, um, follow our uh, perspective and compositional rules, but it wasn't made by an actual person. And also I've seen these beautiful images online where the person doesn't um, say that they are AI art. Oh. 
So people yeah. are like, oh my God, you're an amazing yeah. artist and lots yeah. of compliments and they just keep it nice and quiet. And then you look in their hashtags, like hashtag AI art. And I'm like, oh, it's AI art. Um, yeah. So there's, I don't know, it's, it's, I don't think we've made decisions yet. I don't think we know what to do with this mm -hmm. wonderful tool. Mm -hmm. um, who knows what's going to happen with, with the lawsuits about copyright. Um, I guess we'll just have to sort of see how it all pans out. How it all pans out. Yeah. It would be now, nice if it was kept separate as its own thing. As its um, own category. Correct. Right. So like, you know, you have fine art painters, watercolor, oil, etc., And then you have the sculptures, right? And then you have, uh, I don't know, photography. <laughs> yeah. And then AI art can and be then its AI. own its own separate category yeah that'll be an amazing show yeah, yeah. Really. that it, it just by itself yeah. right yeah now um i i have one more question for you uh because we're running uh out of time but uh um what prompted you to join the society of canadian artists what what made you decide you know i'd like to i'd like to join the sca i was at um i think i was at an art show i think i can't remember which one and i saw that somebody had it and their art was fantastic and i was like what's that <laughs> and uh they told me what it was and it was a society of canadian artists and it sounded it sounded very first uh, um prestigious and um i looked online and i thought wow this is bunch of people, bunch of artists all together and they have competitions and they share and it's a community. And I just wanted to be part of this community. And um, uh, I thought the level of the art was wonderful. The, the quality was beautiful and I wanted to be a part of it. Oh, wow. That's amazing. And, yeah. and, uh, and then you applied uh, immediately as selected member. Is that correct? I did. Um, uh, I wasn't even <laughs> sure what I was even doing or getting into, <laughs> or I just uh, gave the paintings that I had painted at the time. This was like a couple of years ago back yeah. in Vancouver. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. But I know uh, the, the, the procedure is very involved um, and it's very detailed and, um, and, I don't think I've ever told this anybody. I spent a lot of time um, digging through my past and the history and the things I've done. Cause you talk about volunteer work and you talk about, um, you know, give you, give us examples of this. And I was digging through old files and old photos and going through memory lane and uh, uh, stuff I had done. Um, uh, uh, there was a, a, a benefit, a theatrical benefit for Into the Woods, and I designed the poster and the set, and I even helped build the set and did all that stuff yeah. for charity. Yeah. And um, I remember finishing and sending off the application for the SCAA, and it was like my life was in that application. <laughs> And I remember just sitting down and I had the biggest boo-hoo. I just, it just went, whoa. Ah. I guess it was just like a, you know, it was like a, a stressful time, I guess a couple of years ago, it was uh, pre-COVID and all that. But um, I remember it was quite stressful and just digging through and just trying to get, um, for me, one of the things about my art is I try, I'm trying not to get very, um surfacey and very tight and i need more emotion and i yes. need to dig deeper and i want to give something with my paintings that i'm uh, recently trying to just dig a little deeper so that's with that application that's what i was doing i was just trying to find who i was as an artist and find the mark i'd left throughout the years maybe um and uh, it was pretty emotional. I remember I had a big, big old sob cry after that. Uh, <laughs> but just that it was done, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I remember that. That was, yeah. Well, we are so <laughs> honored and happy to have you. It is, it is not an easy process to, to apply for elected status. Um, and uh, it, it's, it's, uh, it's something that we are proud of. And uh, we... We're very happy and proud to have you as part of our um, 
elected members. Thank you so much. I feel um, very grateful. Thank you so much. Yeah. Well, um, we are almost two minutes before eight. So just before we sign off, uh, how can um, how can viewers get in touch with you and, and see your work? Are you doing any shows this summer or do they just go to your website? Uh, they can go to my website and they can in, um, uh, uh, you know, there's a, a section where you can see anything that I have a painting in or that I'm going to be doing is is always listed there. Um, and I do have, you know, I'm always trying to stick my art in some competition somewhere <laughs> right? while I'm trying to get 10 pieces, 10 giant or 10 quality pieces together. I'm trying to, you know, as many competitions as I can and just yes. get my stuff out there. Well, our elected member call is, is open right now, Martin, and I hope you can join that. It, it is a smaller show, though, because we're doing square foot shows, but uh, I hope I <laughs> see your art uh, uh, in, in the roster somewhere there. I'll see what I can do. I'm trying to paint <laughs> and hold on to them for these 10 pieces. Yeah. Um, but who knows? We'll, we'll, we'll have to see what's going on. Yeah, okay. Well, that is the time that we have right now on Instagram. Thank you so much, Martin, for, for taking the time and, and talking to our viewers and our members. This will be available on Instagram uh, indefinitely, and we will also put this on our uh, YouTube page and the Society of Canadian Artists. Uh, Martin, you have a great summer. Oh, thank you so much. And I'll be in the basement cranking out paintings with white backgrounds. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and our regards to everybody, your models, uh, and also to your, to your parents and, uh, and to Markham. And you're in Markham, right? <laughs> Correct. I am up in Markham. <laughs> All right. Well, well, thank you so much. And thank you to everybody who has joined us tonight. Uh, uh, we'll have another Instagram live next month. And we'll keep you posted. Thank you for joining us tonight. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Martin. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> See you later. Is it going to cut off?